Endotoxins are responsible for many of the deleterious effects of gram-negative bacteria. The LPS endotoxin consists of a polysaccharide chain and a lipid moiety, which is usually lipid A. Lipid A is responsible for the toxic effects of gram-negative bacteria, which are listed here in this diagram. Lipid A can activate the release of IL-1, which causes fever. TNF, which causes fever and hemorrhagic tissue necrosis, and nitric oxide, which causes the hypotension seen in septic shock. Lipid A can also activate the complement pathway, with C3A also causing hypotension in addition to producing edema. C5A will attract neutrophils to the site of infection. Finally, endotoxin is capable of activating Hageman factor, also known as factor 12A, which initiates a coagulation cascade and DIC, or disseminated intravascular coagulation. DIC is covered in the hematology section, and you should remember that it occurs when coagulation factors are consumed as small clots are made throughout the body. This consumes platelets and coagulation factors, so that the body cannot properly clot as it normally does. This leads to abnormal bleeding throughout the body. Of note, Neisseria contains lipooligosaccharide, LOS, a variant of gram-negative LPS endotoxin. It does not possess the O polysaccharide moiety in LPS, but still has cytotoxic capabilities like the LPS endotoxin. In order to grow, bacteria require the following minimum energy sources, carbon, nitrogen, water, and various ions. When these conditions have been met, bacteria must then build structures, membranes, and proteins by synthesizing amino acids, carbohydrates, and lipids. A cascade of regulatory events then initiates DNA synthesis. Bacterial growth occurs in four phases. Lag phase. No division occurs during this phase while bacteria are busy gathering necessary growth requirements. Log phase. Growth and rapid cell division occur here. Stationary phase. Bacteria have run out of metabolites at this point and toxic products begin to accumulate. Bacteria stop growing and some will form spores. Death phase. Bacteria succumb to toxic buildup and die. Bacterial genomes consist of a single haploid chromosome and extra chromosomal elements such as plasmas and bacteriophages. These genetic elements may be independent of the bacterial chromosome and can be transferred from one bacterium to another via transformation, conjugation, or transduction. Transformation occurs when bacteria take up free DNA from the environment and begin to express it. Conjugation occurs when genetic material is transferred from a donor or male f bacterium carrying an F-plasmid to a recipient bacterium F-female that does not contain the F-plasmid. The F-plasmid itself carries all the genes necessary in order to facilitate its own transfer. When the F-plasmid becomes incorporated into bacterial chromosome, the bacterium now becomes a high-frequency recombination cell, HFR. This HFR cell now has the ability to transfer whole pieces of chromosomal material into recipient bacterium. In transduction that is generalized, genetic material is transferred by bacterial viruses or bacteriophages. The lytic phage infects bacterium leading to cleavage of bacterial DNA and synthesis of viral proteins. Parts of bacterial chromosome DNA may then become packaged into viral capsids and then the phage can then transfer those genes when infecting other bacteria. This is a very efficient way for bacteria to pass antibiotic resistance. The genes for these five toxins are encoded within a lysogenic phage that can infect bacteria and induce a change in the bacteria through lysogenic conversion. In these examples, the bacteria are non-toxic until they become infected with a lysogenic phage carrying the genetic code for the toxin. For example, Corynebacterium diphtheria only produces diphtheria toxin after it's been infected with the phage carrying diphtheria genetic material.